Our key text for today is Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and deliver them. With this verse in mind, please kneel down for our opening prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we give you the thanks, Lord, for this wonderful Sabbath that you have given to us to gather together here, but to be your children, ready to praise your name. We also thank you for these wonderful children that you have given to us, Lord, to help raise according to your honor and to your glory, that they may be also messengers to all the rest of the world. We ask that you may send your Holy Spirit to be with every single one of us, that you open our hearts and our minds to receive the message, and that we may also be able to show, show this love to the rest of the world. We ask you this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Welcome everyone to our new year special Sabbath celebration. We are so excited to be so here to share with you what we have done these past three years to sing our songs. To start the Alan program, this is going to share a report of what happens to education. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. As you can see, this is a Sabbath celebration for children. So for the past three days, we have been here at Rampart Ranch and having a vacation Bible school. From the parents and adults that are here, can you please raise your hand if you've ever attended a vacation Bible school? We have very few, right? So we have our children that we're able to enjoy. Essentially what a vacation Bible school is, is a week during vacation time when they don't have the busy activities from the regular school programs. And we could spend a whole week, in this case three days, of just studying about the Bible in a fun way. So if you know children, they thrive more when they are having activities instead of just sermonizing. So for them, if we could spend here 30, 45 minutes, that wouldn't really work. But if we have activities, they learn so much more. So in the past three days, we have been studying the book of Daniel, a book that usually is reserved for adults, because what do we find in the book of Daniel? Prophecies. Prophecies, right? It's usually images and years and you know all these complicated things that we find in the book of Daniel. But we made it our point to try to teach them about the book of Daniel in a way that could also benefit them. So we started with chapter 2, which is the uh, dream of the image. I think we have a, a small um, statue here made of foam of the, uh, the statue of Daniel chapter 2. And what did we learn about Daniel chapter 2? Can somebody remember from the children? What special character traits did we learn on Wednesday? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Yes, we learned faithfulness, that whatever God says will happen, will happen. Right? He told us he will come back, so we are 100% sure that he was. He will come back because he said so. Right? We also studied chapter 3. Who remembers what we learned in chapter 3? It was the fiery furnace. What was that word that we learned on Wednesday, on Thursday? Danny? Wisdom. Wisdom, yes. And we learned that wisdom is the knowledge of learning to do right because it's right and not doing wrong because it's wrong, right? So we don't do that. We do what is right because it's right, just like the three friends of Daniel. And in chapter four, we learned of another vision, a vision of a fig tree, right? That was showing what? Well, what did Nebuchadnezzar have in his heart? Do you remember? Right, and we are supposed to learn that we are supposed to have what instead? Humility. Humility. These are the three topics that we learned throughout our VBS program. We had activities such as character trait, memory challenge, crafts, and games, all with the purpose of helping them learn these traits really early on so they can carry them with, the, with them for the rest of their lives. Uh, we also had some fun activity that Brother Danny uh, plan for us, some hiking, some, um, let me see here, we had some hiking, some insert research yesterday that we had a small field trip around the property, 
And he also indulges with the jumping house that I'm pretty sure the children all enjoy, right? We all yeah. have fun in the jumping house? Yes, we all have a fun time there. So this was just a little bit of what we were able to learn. We're very happy that the children had a good time. I feel like they had a good time, right? You had a good time? Yeah. yeah I think so. Um, hopefully we can do this again soon. But it's a good way of helping children to learn about the Bible in a way that they can appreciate, right? And activities and crafts and games, and that they will remember this for the rest of their life. At this point, I want to invite the children to share with us a special hymn that we prepared throughout the week to share with you. So we're gonna invite all of the children to come up to have a special song. <coughs> Okay, so thankfully, I think that we've all enjoyed this past few days, correct? Yeah. Everybody loved it? Yes. I know I did. Which was your favorite part? Who has a favorite part that wants to share? Yes, we'll go with Anna. I like the ping pong games. The ping pong games. Look at that. What about Grace? The crafts. Anyone else? Uh, okay, we'll go with Seth. The Jumping House. I forget your name. Timothy. Timothy. What was your favorite part, Timothy? Jumping House. Oh, the Jumping House. Okay. We'll stop for now, okay? Because I know all of us had a favorite part. But, what's that? Walk exploits. What? The Walk. Oh, the Walk. Oh, yes. The Walk was really nice. The so rocks. The Rocks. Well, we had to walk there, so yeah, the Rocks were great. Uh, and... For the parents that weren't here all week, we got to study the book of Daniel as uh, Sister Belen has shared with us. Now, we were able to study a few chapters, chapter two, chapter three, and chapter what? Four. I don't know if you had a favorite chapter, but I think that I know I have a favorite one. Which one was your favorite chapter? Four. Four, okay, great. Now, that's not where old Daniel ends. Okay, Daniel has 12 chapters in total. That means that there's a lot of chapters that we couldn't cover. So, okay, we'll take questions after, okay? So, today we're going to go very briefly through one of the chapters that we didn't have time to go over. Because did you know that Daniel also talks about all these different animals. Daniel talks about the lion, about the bear, and what's that third one there? What's underneath the bear? What is that? A, a jaguar with two heads and a leg. <laughs> it's a leopard or a jaguar, right? 
with two heads. Well, actually, it has more than two heads. You can't really see them. It has four heads in there. Yeah, four heads and four wings. It also talks about what is that other one underneath the, the jaguar there, or the leopard? A dinosaur. It's like a dinosaur, right? And it talks about different animals. And it's actually all talking about the same thing about Babylon, Medio Persia, Greece, Rome, and Europe. And then, if you remember, right, when we went, went out for a walk, what do we see out there when we're walking? What do we see? Giant rocks. Do you remember that we were able to go underneath some of those rocks? Yeah. Now, who remembers what happens to the image of Daniel? Who remembers? What happens to the image? Yes. What breaks the statue? The rock. In so much that it turns the statue into what? Dust. Powder. Now, I don't want that rock to land on me, right? Who wants a giant rock to land on them? No, I don't want that. Because it turns us into powder. Now, the Bible does talk about another prophecy. And I want us to look briefly at this other prophecy, okay? This is in Daniel chapter 12. It talks about the end of the world. Does that sound scary? Yeah. The end of the world? You know, sometimes those things can be a little scary. But I'm hoping that today we won't be scared when this world ends. And I'll explain why, okay? And we'll talk about as to why that's not scary. Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 says... And at that time shall Michael, the great prince, he will, uh, who protects the people, he will stand. There's going to be a time of distress such as has never been in the world until now. But at that time, the people of God, or your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth, they will wake up. What would happen to some people that are buried in the ground? They will what? They will, wake up. they will wake up. Some for everlasting life and some for everlasting content. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So Daniel, actually talks about a time at the end of the world. And sometimes when we think of the end of the world, this is what we think of, right? We think of fire and buildings falling and everything burning up. And sometimes, obviously, we get a little scared. Or lava, right? But did you know that the Bible tells us that we shouldn't be scared? Because... Even though bad things are going to happen, God has promised to protect each and every one of them. Did you know that? What happened to Daniel's friends? Who remembers their names? The Hebrew names. What was it? Uh huh. Ananias. Azab. That's right. Good job. And who remembers the Babylonian names? Yes. Yes. A little different the order, but you got it. Okay. So here, what happened to them when the king put them in the fire? Did they get burnt? No. No. Because who was protecting them? God. God was protecting them. So should we be afraid of when the world is going to end? No. No. Because we're going to be with who? With God. And the Bible talks about the end, but it tells us that we shouldn't be scared of the end. Because you know, when God comes, there's going to be two people. Okay, two types of people. One type of people that are going to be so scared that God is coming back. And they're going to scream to the mountains and they're going to say, Please hide us. Rocks fall on us because we don't want to see Jesus. I don't think you're going to be like that. There's going to be another group of people, the Bible tells us, that they're going to say, this is the God that we were waiting for. 
We are so happy that he is here. So whenever people talk about the end of the world, we shouldn't be afraid of the end of the world. Because if we are with God, Daniel chapter 12, 12 tells us that Michael the great prince will protect his people. And do you remember what Nebuchadnezzar saw in the middle of the fire? He saw three people, but he also saw what? Jesus. He saw a fourth one. And who was that fourth one? God. God, Jesus. And that is the prince that will protect us. And this is why when we talk <clears throat> about the end of the world, we shouldn't be scared. And you know that sometimes the Bible tells us that some people will die before God comes back. I don't know if you have maybe a grandpa or a great-grandfather that died, and now we know they're sleeping, right? They're asleep. But do you know what the Bible tells us? What will happen with them? What will happen with all our family members if they, have, if they are dead or they're sleeping in the ground? What will happen? Who remembers? They will awake. Now, when they wake up, how are they going to come back? Are they going to come back old and walking with a little cane and maybe in a wheelchair? Are they going to come back like that? No. How are they going to come back? Who remembers? They're going to come back nice and strong. And like if they were 15 years old, they're going to be able to jump and then grandpa and grandpa will be able to run with you everywhere. Imagine grandpa and grandma climbing trees with you and jumping rocks. That's how they're going to come back. They're not going to come back the way we remember them, maybe a little old, because the Bible tells us that they're not going to be sick when they resurrect. Okay, they won't need any wheelchairs. They won't need any crutches. Or maybe grandpa, oh, you remember that he was in the bed all day and all night. But they're not going to be like that anymore. They're going to be jumping like a child. Imagine how beautiful that's going to be. And that's the promise that the Bible gives us. Not just that. When Jesus comes back, did you know that Jesus will come back in a big cloud? Do you remember here, right before it was raining, what did we see in the sky? <clears throat> a big cloud, right? But when Jesus comes back, it's going to be a big cloud, but are we going to be scared of that cloud? No. no. Because who's coming back in that cloud? Jesus. And then what is he going to do with us? He will take us in that cloud, and we're going to go where? To heaven. And the Bible tells us that we'll be there in heaven. Now, I want us to talk a little bit about heaven. Okay? Because sometimes we don't talk enough about heaven. Did you know that? Sometimes we forget about heaven, and all we talk about is the bad things that we see around the world. But it's important to talk about heaven. In Daniel 12, tells us that the people that follow God, they will shine like the stars. Did you know that when you get to heaven, God will give you a what? A crown. Now, is that crown going to be bright or all dull and dark? How do you think? It's going to be a bright, shining crown. How many love crowns? Now, who is the only people in the world that wear crowns? The kings and queens. And princesses and princes, right? So they all wear crowns. So what does that mean? That in heaven you'll be what? Kings and queens and prince and princesses. Not just that, but did you know that in heaven <clears throat> you'll be able to touch all the animals? Did you know that? Okay. Have you ever wanted to touch a lion? What about a bear? What about, have you ever wished, have you ever wished in your heart that you could swim with what? With the fish. Who wants to swim with the fish? Right? But what happens if we try to swim in the water? Underneath the water. Right? There could be poisonous fish. 
But did you know in heaven, there's going to be no poisonous jellyfish? There's going to be no dangerous sharks? In heaven, you'll be able to swim with all the fish. And you're able to ride maybe a, a, a killer whale, but it's not going to be a killer whale anymore. A dolphin? Yes, Anna. Oh, a lizard. So in heaven, we'll be able to touch all the animals that we want. Not just that. But did you know that our world is not the only world that God made? Did you know that? There are other worlds. Many, many worlds. And you'll get to visit all of them. You'll be able to fly to all the worlds and you will meet people and creatures that we've never even seen. I don't know what they will look like. I have no idea. All I know is that it's going to be beautiful. Maybe, maybe unicorns, yeah. There's going to be beautiful animals. And we'll get to visit all the different worlds. And I am looking forward to visiting worlds that maybe have like seven moons. Or maybe 20 moons. Or maybe a thousand moons. Yeah, so aliens, of course, because aliens just mean something from another planet, okay? Not the way we see them in cartoons or people draw them. Now, <clears throat> you know what the best thing of heaven is? Who will be there? Jesus will be there. God will be there. And not just that, but the Bible tells us that God will give us our own mansion. Now, I know sometimes we're afraid to sleep in our own bed, right? How many people have been afraid of sleeping in their own bed by themselves, right? Because we're afraid of the dark. But is there going to be night in heaven? No, no more night. Is there going to be bedtime in heaven? No. Oh, I don't know. We'll find out, okay? Maybe no bedtime. But, yeah, if you want to sleep, I'm sure you could. Not just that, but you will have your own house, your own mansion. You can have a big house to play in and invite all your friends. And who's going to be next to you all the time? Jesus will be there next to you. Yeah. But you know what? I think that we need to understand that in heaven, you know one thing that will not be in heaven? You know what that is? Satan. Satan. And Satan tells people to do bad things. Satan tells people to sin. What is and then, sin? Sin is when you do something bad that goes against God. So sin is to do something against God. But did you know that Satan in the beginning, was Satan ugly like some people picture him? How was Satan in the beginning? He was the shiniest angel. Yeah, he was a shiny angel, a beautiful angel. But do you know what happened with Satan? He said, I don't want to follow God. That I want to be God. I want to follow my own bad thoughts, my own bad heart. I want to follow all my feelings. And I don't want to follow God. And then he took a third of the angels of heaven with him. And they all said that they didn't want to follow God. And then the Bible says there was a war in heaven. And then the Satan or the serpent, he was kicked out of heaven because they couldn't be there in there. Satan was kicked out of heaven. So Satan will not be in heaven. Because you know what Satan tells you to do? Satan says, don't listen to God. Listen to your bad feelings. Listen to your bad thoughts. And you know, sometimes adults, they would rather listen to some of their bad thoughts and bad feelings. This is why we all need to decide that we will never follow things that are bad. We will always follow who? God, no matter what. And sometimes, even if adults make mistakes, we can always remind them that God is there to help them. Now, Satan, sadly, he didn't want, he doesn't want anybody to be in heaven. Did you know that? Satan doesn't want anyone to be in heaven. He wants to destroy everyone. 
And this is why Satan, he lied to Adam and Eve. And you know what he told Adam and Eve? If you disobey God, it's okay. Nothing bad is going to happen. Was that true? No. What happened to Adam and Eve when they disobeyed? Could they live next to God and do bad and evil things? No. So they had to choose. Either you had to follow God or follow who? Satan. Satan. I know I don't want to follow Satan. I want to follow what God tells me that I should do. And this is why God gave us something known as the Ten Commandments. Now, in the Ten Commandments, all we have there is how we can love God and how we can love our... Uh -huh. Oh, that one is because it's made out of rock. But the Ten Commandments just tells us how to love God and how to love one another. That's the only way we know what true love is. So whenever we see the Ten Commandments, all we see is God's love. Because it tells you that you shouldn't hurt people, that you shouldn't kill people. It tells us that you shouldn't steal, that you shouldn't lie. Because all these things, they are not good for us to do. And they're against God's love. Yes, Anna? Is the Ten Commandments going to what? Oh, are they going to be made out of gold in heaven? So our question is, will the Ten Commandments be made out of gold in heaven? I think we'll have to find out. I know in heaven, the, the law of love is going to exist, which means that we should always love one another. Now, before we finish, let's look at a couple more things. Now, uh-huh. What's that? Is the covenant going to be in heaven? Oh, the Ark of the Covenant. We'll have to find out. Maybe we'll talk one day about all the things that will be in heaven, especially about the sanctuary. We'll have to talk a little bit about that, okay? And I am sure there will be a lot of reminders of the life we've had here so we never go back. Okay, now, let's look at a couple more things. Now, Satan tells you don't follow God's law. He says God's law is bad. You don't need it in your life because it's a bunch of rules. But did you know that's not true? The law of God is the law of love. And that's what we should remember. Because without God's law, do you know everything we would have would only be death, despair, sadness. Because people wouldn't know what they need to do. So it's important for us to remember that God always wants us to do the right thing. Not just that. But God, uh, there is a Bible verse in the Bible. There's a Bible verse that tells us that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. Like that everybody that wants to follow him can follow him and we don't have to die. So Jesus wants to remind us today that he is there. And even if we've made a mistake, what happens if we make a mistake? How many people, how many of us have ever done something wrong before? Right? All of us have. Now, do we have to continue doing bad things? No. Who should we go to? God. To God. And what should we say to God? Sorry. I am sorry. Please help me to what? To never do it again. Can God help me not to do bad things? Yes. Yes. So if you've done something bad, you can come to God. And did you know that God can forgive you? So I think that it's important for us to make a choice today. We can choose to follow God or we can choose to follow who? So we can choose to follow God or we can choose to follow who? Satan. You know, every day you can make a choice. You can choose to listen to your parents or not to listen to your parents. But what should we do? Listen. listen to our parents. We can choose to do things that are bad or to do things that are good. Each one of us has to make a choice. Whenever Satan tells you to do something bad, what are you going to tell him? No. No, I don't want to do bad things. Because I want to live with who? 
with God. Yes, Emily. I want to I want to choose the path to follow God. You want to choose the path that follows God. Yes. Yes. Oh, Lucifer, yeah. Satan's name in heaven was Lucifer. Okay, last thought. I have a question. Like, uh, Lucifer, like, he was uh -huh. Different animals. Okay. I think it's okay not to just watch music. So he watches nature videos on Sabbath, okay? Yeah, so yes, I said that there are these animals. Yeah. And there's two of them. Okay. Back to America, which is South America with Mexico. Uh -huh. And Asia. Okay. And, and um, I wonder. Okay, what is your question, huh? Uh, Will there be dangerous animals in heaven? No, well, they could, well, they could uh -huh. be still then bear, but they, but won't, they won't be dangerous anymore, right? They won't attack us. Yeah, they will not attack us in heaven. Okay, so each one of us has to make a choice. Now, parents that are here today, it doesn't matter how many sermons your children hear, how many camp meetings they attend, how many VBS programs we put them in. Do you know what the greatest sermon and example your children will hear uh, will be? Is that example that they see at home. You know, our program for this week was called Dare to Be a Danny. Right? That was, the, that was the, the whole theme, the whole thought. But did you know that without Daniel's parents... In the influence that the parents had upon Daniel, where would Daniel be? He wouldn't exist. Daniel would not be there. So this is why I think it's important for us to learn of a beautiful prophecy now for the parents. There is a beautiful prophecy in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 6. And I believe this prophecy needs to be fulfilled in God's church today. And that prophecy is, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. I believe that the children need to make a decision today. But parents need to make this decision every single day that I will teach my children the way Daniel's parents taught him. That I will show my children what true love is. That I will make my home the most beautiful place that there could be on this earth. You know, sure, we tell the children, dare to be a Daniel. That's beautiful. But what about us? What are we daring ourselves to be? Are we giving our children a perfect example? And I want to finish with one last paragraph, okay? There's a beautiful paragraph in the Spirit of Prophecy. It tells us, Home should be made all that the word implies. It should be a little heaven upon earth. A place where the affections are cultivated instead of being studiously repressed. Our happiness depends, continues on, it says, our happiness depends upon this cultivation of love, sympathy, and true courtesy to one another. The reason there are so many hard-hearted men and women in the world is that the true affection has been regarded as weakness and has been discouraged and repressed. The better part of the nature of persons of this class was perverted and dwarfed in childhood. And unless rays of divine light can melt away their coldness and hard-hearted selfishness, the happiness of such is buried forever. Parents, you are the ones that are going to teach your children of what it means 
to be a Daniel. It is up to us to give them a little piece of heaven in our home. Our children don't know who God is. They've never seen God. They've never studied about Him. Our children know who God is based on what they see we are to them. Every word, every expression, every thought is saying who God is to them. I want us to be challenged. I want us to dare to be this family like Daniel had at one point. I want us to dare ourselves to be these types of parents, righteous parents that love our children, that pray with them, that show them every moment with every word, with every thought that comes out, that is always towards God. Let's dare ourselves to love our children the way God loves us. Let's dare to love God. Without parents, there is no Daniels. Without parents, there would be no Jeremiah's. I don't know what the future holds for us, but parents, I know that this little ones here, we've all heard, they want to be like Jesus. They want to be like Daniel. Let's not bury that. Let's come closer to God. Let's come closer to Jesus. And every single one of them here can be those Daniels that the world needs. I pray and I hope that all of us can make that choice today. Let's make a covenant in our hearts to follow Jesus from the littlest ones to the oldest ones. May God help us. May God give us courage to be Daniel's and to be Daniel's parents. Amen. Amen. Amen.
It is time for us to collect the offerings. Lord, for this day and the offerings that you have given us, help us to use it to expand your work. At this moment, I would like to just take a moment to give thanks to all of the participants of the program, especially to, let me make sure I don't forget anybody, to Sister Lana, Sister Brooks, Sister Alina, Sister Valerie, Sister Elizabeth in the kitchen, and especially for everyone from the Denver area that allowed us to come and have the program here at Ramford uh, Ranch. Uh, we really appreciate everyone and we hope that we can do it again in the future. Brother Danny, thank you so much for inviting us to come and have all of the children here. To the parents, thank you for bringing your children for this wonderful week that we were able to have here. And now to conclude, we ask uh, everyone to join us once again with hymn number 155. Our merciful Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for this whole week that we got to spend together. Thank you because you allowed the parents to bring the children here. Thank you because you gave us health and energy to run around. And now, dear Lord, we come before you to ask that you can help us to be like Daniel to follow their example with his friends, to look forward for when you return for all of us. Help us as parents to continue to grow with our children. Help us to be parents like all those parents of old time, like the parents that raised children, that became men and women that were true to principle, no matter what happened around them. Help us to make a covenant. Help us to make a promise with you now that we would dedicate ourselves and our children for your honor and for your glory. We pray and we ask for all of this. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs>